guys, it's Christine with This Girl Hikes, and in today's video, I'm answering some of your questions. I posted on Instagram and on my community tab on YouTube to see if anybody had any questions for me to answer, and I got quite a few, so I'm going to do my best to answer as many of them as I possibly can in half an hour or less. My intention is not to maintain a strict ketogenic diet on trail. Um, but that's kind of hard to say because being in ketosis is a state in your body. So I think that there's some wiggle room in how many carbs you can take in just depending on the individual person and maybe the stresses that their body's put under. I do intend to try to maintain a pretty clean diet and a healthy diet. Um, I know that my body will get very run down if I'm not fueling it with the proper nutrients. So that's very important to me and I'm considering that as I am laying out my resupply strategy. In terms of types of food, I was pretty successful in 2019 in finding good, healthy, keto friendly foods on trail and I have some videos about that. Um, and I can make some more in the future as I continue to find more items that work well for me. But things like nut butters, um, Next Mile meals, branded um, backpacking, dehydrated backpacking meals work really well. Um, I love seaweed. Things that are like coconut based um, work well for me. They maybe tend to be a little bit heavier than some other options, but I also find that I don't eat that much, so it all kind of works out. For me, it's a lot more wasteful in energy expenditure to carry foods that I won't eat. Um, so if it's stuff that I like and the weight is going down every single day because I'm actually consuming it, then that's what I will bring. To answer the first question, I keep my eyes kind of in the, on the entire situation around me. Um, I don't like to get tunnel vision and just stare at the trail, so I'm kind of constantly scanning. Um, so I, I will check the trail for a period of time in front of me, and then I pull my eyes up and I look around, and um, periodically I also like to look behind me. So I just want to maintain full situational awareness for safety, but also so that I can take in the views. Um, I have noticed that if I really, really want to just stop, like take, take in the view, it's a better decision for me to just stop for a second and just like scan, take a breath, really take it in, and then continue moving just to avoid injury, but also because it just, it feels good. <laughs> Um, do I get bored while hiking? I uh, can't think of a time that I have ever gotten bored while hiking. There are times where I get tired and frustrated or just like kind of ornery. Um, if I'm doing something really difficult, there are times I'm like, why am I doing this? This is awful. But that's never a feeling that lasts. It's just like kind of through a suffer fest, that's the suffering part. Um, and I, I'm always happy that I did it in the end. But boredom is not something that I ever encounter. And I think documenting um, the experience maybe helps with that. I um, enjoy so much shooting photos and videos of my experience. And I also just kind of get into like this meditative chill state like there's just like a flow that goes between creating creating something and experiencing something that it I'm just like fully engaged in it um, and I love it so much like I just I could never imagine it getting boring in terms of in terms of the biggest challenges that I think I'll face on the PCT I definitely have concerns about overuse injuries um, so I'm going to do my best to mitigate any of those. And then I think um, the mental capacity, like the mental fortitude will probably be my biggest challenge and I'm doing everything that I can to prepare myself for that. Um, just kind of getting into the daily routine of 
breaking camp, hitting the trail all day long, <laughs> setting up camp, going to bed, and repeat. Um, from what I've heard from uh, former PCT through hikers or through hikers in general, that can be mentally taxing, and so that's something that I'm kind of just preparing myself, knowing that that will happen to me, and that I I just need to push through that and continue and remember the reason why I want to be out there. Arlene asks about whether or not I'm married. Um, I know that I've talked about being married on this channel in the past um, that has come to an end sadly and that's kind of all I'm gonna say about that but uh, yes <laughs> I I think I do um, I'm having fun this season exploring winter hiking um, and even my summer trips ended up being quite cold, so I don't feel like I really had like a lightweight uh, summer trip at all this year, at least nothing that's coming to mind right now. Um, so my, my pack weight is always kind of about the same. Um, it's not that that I mind so much, it's just the feeling of being cold. Um, when there's inclement weather at camp, it's hard to enjoy just sitting around uh, at camp with other people and just having that like community environment which is something that I enjoy very much um, swimming in alpine lakes and laying on rocks in the sun like the, those things are so incredible to me I love doing that and when the weather is not great or not warm um, that go, kind of goes up. Hiking is something that has helped me live more in the present moment. I find that when I'm out there, um, specifically when I'm backpacking, just because it's like a multi-day event where I can say like this day I don't have to deal with and sort of cannot deal with the things that are happening in the other part of the world. Um, it really helps me like disengage from that and engage in what's happening in the present moment, the things around me, which um, is such a relief from any sort of like anxieties. Uh, so that has helped a lot and it's help, helped me build um, self-confidence and courage, um, which helps me in my everyday life as well. So uh, those are, two kind of mental or a few kind of mental components um, where it's helped me and then physically I think hiking has more than anything else inspired me to since I want to do bigger and longer and harder things it encourages me to take care of myself on a day-to-day -day basis so that I can go out there and do those things um, touched on earlier, I do think the mental aspect of it will be the most challenging part of the trail. And so um, over January, February, and March, I am ramping up my adventure schedule in a way. Um, I have a lot of things that are happening um, within that time that are me being on trail or traveling or just out of my ordinary routine and I think that that will really help me in um, getting onto trail and feeling less homesick so I can kind of go do some things for a couple of days come home get back into my routine head out again and then I'm kind of gradually working my way onto being on trail every day and away from home um, and so it's not just like an abrupt switch of like life A to life B. Um, and hopefully that works because that's the only thing I could think of to help. <laughs> I am heading out on trail alone. Um, I wanted it that way. This is something that I want to do um, for myself and kind of by myself. But I know that I will meet a lot of people out on trail and I definitely look forward to that. I'm not looking to run away from people. I 
love talking to people and engaging with people and getting to know new people and I know the trail community will be a wonderful opportunity for me to do that. Um, I Google. Um, I look. I love to watch YouTube videos. Um, I always buy a map of where I'm going um, and a lot of times my trip planning comes from looking at a map. Um, especially as I'm spending more and more time doing this over the years, um, I infrequently get inspired to create a trip from somebody else's trip and it's more often um, based on me looking at a map and deciding kind of a route and the things that I want to uncover about that area. And from there, I will start to look at what information is available um, on YouTube or blogs um, to see kind of, you know, what I might anticipate. Um, and then I check the weather forecast, but I, you know, I'm not an advanced planner very often. Um, I plan things pretty last minute. Um, sometimes like hours before it happens, uh, and that's just kind of how I roll that I think I've been trained almost into doing that because so many of my trips have been, uh, uh changed at the last minute because of circumstances out of my control. And so I just kind of like throw things together. I'm sure other people have much more reasonable answers to that kind of question. Uh, Roger asks if I plan to go backpacking this winter. Yes, I have a lot planned. I just got back from a trip in Joshua Tree National Park. That was two nights. I am headed up into the Eastern Sierra later this week to ex actually to take a mountaineering course. Um, and then, and that will be in the field. Um, and then I'm headed at the end of the month to Scotland to do the Cairn Gorms. And then I actually have one other trip that's kind of happening in between some of those. Um, and yeah, then I've got, I have two trips in February. There's, there's a lot of backpacking coming up and yes, there will be videos of these trips. Uh, you know, it's really kind of hard for me to answer this question just because I don't know what it is that your daughter is opposed to with sleeping in a tent. Um, I think maybe figure out what it is that's making her uncomfortable about that and address that specifically. Um, it is something that takes some getting used to, I think. Maybe have her try out some of the gear, like the the air mattress and the sleeping bag in a space that she feels more comfortable sleeping in. So maybe in your tent cabin or something like that. Um, she can just get used to the equipment before moving into a tent, uh, maybe being in a tent with other people. It's, it's so hard for me to answer this question, but I'm so happy to hear that your daughter is an adventure bug and so hopefully you can make that transition. Um, although some people are just very happy camping someplace very comfortable and then going out for day hikes. Um, so, you know, more power to you if that's what your, your uh, standpoint is. I have not done either one of those and I don't have any immediate plans to do either one. I like to go outdoors to explore new places um, and I don't like to go outdoors to stand in a queue. So that's what my impression of those two hikes is, that it's very busy. Um, yes, there are risks involved with it, but I'm not of a bucket list mindset that I want to just do something just to say that I've done it. I want to enjoy the experience, to grow from the experience, and to have the kind of experience that I want to have and standing in a line is not one of those things. So it's not, I'm not saying I will never do it, but it's just not something that I'm seeking to do at this time.
sorry to disappoint you, but there are some really fantastic videos of people that have enjoyed those trips and um, I'm sure there's plenty to watch. Okay, so moving on to the questions that were asked on Instagram of an idea of how many zero days I will take while hiking the PCT and the answer to that is no, I do not. I have, I don't even have a rough concept of how many zero days I'm going to take. Um, I'll probably get that dialed in a little bit closer, at least for the first 700 miles or so um, before I head out on trail. But as of this time, no, there is no plan for that. Um, and a lot of that, I think, is just me kind of having the experience of knowing that even if I put together a really detailed plan, all I'll be doing with that is creating stress for myself and thinking that I need to stick to the plan. And I need to be flexible and listen to my body. Um, and that will really be what determines how many zero days I need to take. I know that I'll probably need to take a fair amount of them for the sake of vlogging for the sake of uploading to YouTube because I will need to have periodic access to Wi-Fi for like a pretty considerable amount of time in order to upload videos. So that will play into it. Um, so I won't be shortcutting zero days too much. Rosie Pug Rolls, that's cute, asked what kind of camera I use and complimented my night pictures of Joshua Tree. Thank you so much. I shoot now with a Sony Alpha 6400 and I use the 16 to 155 millimeter lens. Um, for the photos I think you're talking about, I shot those on the Sony Alpha 5100 with the 16 to 55 meter lens. I think I said my lens wrong. I'll fix it on the screen. <laughs> um, and I still shoot my time lapses and my astrophotography with my old camera, even though it doesn't shoot 4K, because it has, there's an app that Sony used to have through the Play Memories that I have downloaded on that camera that I can't get on my new camera. And so I will, I, it is not uncommon for me to hike backpack with three cameras and multiple lenses and um, audio equipment. So uh, yes, thank you for your compliment on that and um, I am a Sony girl. <laughs> oh, I also have the um, GoPro Hero 7 Black and that's how I shoot my in motion shots for my videos. Moises asks what my base weight is for the PCT and if I'm thinking of buying more gear. I do not know my base weight because yes, I am thinking of buying not necessarily more gear, but different gear. I right now could go out there and do it with what I own, um, but there are some things that are still not quite working for me and so I will definitely spend the next couple of months making some changes to my gear setup just so that I'm satisfied with what I have. Diane outside Las Vegas asks if my family is supportive of my decision to hike the PCT and I would say yes, absolutely. I come from a family of people that are adventurous minded, we are kind of free-spirited um, in the way that we are dreamers and so now I am out here making a dream come true and they are totally on board with that. I think uh, as is normal they probably are a little bit nervous and just want me to be safe and me to do what's um, sound like make sound decisions and things like that but they are totally supportive and um, I'm very very grateful for that. Kevin Dollins asks if I'm excited to hike the PCT. Yes, I definitely am excited to hike the PCT. As I said, it is a dream come true for me. I'm, I'm kind of funny in that when there's something that's really important to me that I am excited about per se, like I don't necessarily act excited all the time just because I get really focused on making sure that that thing can come to pass so that I'm not having all this like excited energy and making all sorts of like 
strange decisions <laughs> or uh, I it's kind of hard to explain but I, I get a little focused um, and then at some point like this is even with just r regular backpacking trips um, if I'm going someplace new or someplace that I've really wanted to see I'm not like hey I'm so excited oh my gosh like oh. I get a little bit more quiet and focused and at some point when I'm there when it's happening it'll suddenly like come over me as a wave like oh, this is happening we're here we're making it so, and then then the excitement kind of rolls in um, but yes I am super excited and grateful to hike the PCT and also slightly nervous that something could happen that would get in my way of doing that. So <clears throat> there's a little reservation there as well. Thank you so much you guys for watching and for asking questions, participating. I really, really appreciate your support and engagement on my channel. I just am having so much fun doing this in the community and I look forward to us engaging further as the year progresses. Like happy new year, happy 2020. Get out there and make your dreams come true. Thanks for following along with mine. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.